Hi, I'm Vicky Ann, Director of Creative Recruiters. Welcome to the Creative Studio Insider Podcast. My guest today is Karen Simpson. Karen is the Studio Manager at Woolworths. Thanks so much for spending time with me today, Karen. No, oh, it's my pleasure. Let's start with you sharing with our listeners how someone from Montreal who started out as a fashion designer ended up in graphic design, which then led you to a career at Woolies in New South Wales. How did that happen? Uh, it's not that much of a crazy story. Um, I did. Uh, I studied fashion design back home in Montreal and then worked in that industry for quite a while, which at the time was quite viable still. Um, so I did that for... Oh, I guess almost a decade. Um, but within working within fashion design, there is a lot of graphic design involved. Um, and I guess sort of in the nascent age of the internet, I really kind of really got into all things web. Um, so I taught myself a lot of things and then sort of we launched, uh, business partner and I, we launched our own clothing line. And with that came a website and uh, you know, doing business online, which was in, you know, the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I just ended up getting more and more into all things digital. Um, and then my jobs ended up sort of leaning towards that way. And then I decided to move to Australia because I really knew there was opportunities here and also, honestly, to escape the Canadian winter. Let's yeah. be perfectly honest. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so when I got here, um, I thought, oh, I'm, I decided to come and do my master's degree in um, design at UNSW. Uh, and in the meantime, I thought, oh, well, I'll just I'll continue to work in the design, the fashion industry, because that's where my experience is. And for the life of me, I could not find a job to save my life within the fashion industry here. Oh. I mean, lo and behold, of course, we know that it's not an industry that is super big here, nor is it anymore in Montreal because of all the manufacturing having gone overseas and that sort of thing. So. Oh. Um, um, in the end, my first job was as, you know, a web manager and graphic designer here in Australia for a small company um, while I studied. And uh, then I moved on to News Corp into a studio manager role, um, and which was very similar to what I do now at Woolies X. Um, and then I moved over to Woolies X and they, it was the initial um, job description was uh, as a traffic manager. Um, but then of course they've done an agile transformation and let's be perfectly honest, like a traffic manager and a studio manager really is a scrum master in a lot of senses. So there's a lot of uh, similarities between the roles. So um, I've been performing that job for about two and a half years now at Woolies X uh, and having gone from being called traffic manager to scrum master, we were already kind of working in a scrum based environment anyway. Uh, we work with Jira. So um, it was just a matter of formality, really, calling me a scrum master as of about six months ago. So um, this is probably the first time I've ever seen a studio manager also have the title of scrum master. What, what is a scrum master and how does it relate to the role of the studio manager? Well, a scrum master is, this, well, in with regard to my role, we work in content delivery. So um, as a Scrum Master, I traffic all of the work to my my squad members, we can't really call them squads, um, and make sure everything gets done on time. But then also at the same time, the biggest thing is is to get out of the way of the team and allow them to, to get their work done. So my job is primarily is to facilitate and to remove impediments and just get out of the way don't keep a stranglehold on people and keeping an eye on over everyone. Everyone is owns and is responsible for their work to get it done from end to end. And I'm there to sort of facilitate that. And how big is your team and what type of, you know, job titles sit within it? Um, well, I've got two squads that I look after. Uh, so we've got, I think I've got nine on one team. Uh, and I think the same uh, on the other. It, it chops and changes a bit because we'll bring in people who have different capabilities depending on the project. Oh. I'll, I'll get to that later because that's sort of part of Agile. Yeah. Um, and within each of the teams, we'll have uh, a business analyst, an analytics person. I've got designers, developers, um, SEO specialists, 
uh, and we have some integrations people and essentially they're kind of like the project managers of particular campaigns. And so they'll come to us and then we traffic all the work into the squads at sprints. Okay, and earlier you said that your teams are responsible for producing content. Can you help us understand what that is? Yeah, so my team, well, we do campaigns and customer-led seasonal um, work. So that means things like Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, and then uh, other types of campaigns, like for instance, we just, uh, we're just coming towards the end of Discovery Gardens, which has been a really huge campaign that we've run at Woolies. So that's the type of thing that we, we put out. The other team that I, I work with, we work on sort of internal websites uh, for team members, um, for the corporate site of Woolworths, uh, as well as sort of the advertising marketing arm um, as well, so. Okay, now more and more studio managers are talking about agile transformation and the role that it plays in a collaborative creative services studio. So, so what are your thoughts and experiences using this or similar methodologies? Um, well, I think the main thing from my perspective, probably not the biggest change, but very welcome change in how I've always wanted to work or preferred to work with teams. And the role of any leader within a scrum team is as a servant leader. So we're there to serve and help the squad members get their work done. And like I said, get out of their way um, and allow them to have agency um, to be able to, to complete the work um, on their own. Go and ahead. so it's it's sorry yeah go ahead you know you go ahead um it's it's diff agile is different in in comparison to say waterfall which is kind of an older school project management style where you sort of you have chunks of work and you wait for that bit to be done until you do this bit and then you do this bit and then you do this bit whereas agile we can work on several things concurrently and we just identify sort of dependencies across the different projects when we work on multiple projects at a time at different stages and wait for other teams to deliver us their bit in that bit um, but it allows us to chop and change and be more reactive when needed mm. for um, you know when we have you know make some kind of put together a responsive campaign uh, in you know to to answer like demand or whatever from from customers and they tell us they want something we're going we're going to give it to you and we'll try and deliver it we're able to deliver it quite quickly as well and i find that you don't you don't have to sit and wait for a lot of approvals from on high once the trigger has been pulled we have everything that we need end to end to deliver and that's kind of like the essence of, of getting out of the team's way and allowing them to deliver the work and get it all done. Diagnosing the key constraints in an organisation and finding um, efficiency improvements in the processes and systems is on the mind, of course, of people like you in studio management, creative studio manager roles. Can you tell us about how you've managed that for your teams, your Sure. Yeah. Um, the main thing that we do is because we work in two week sprints. So we we decide on two weeks worth of work and that's what we're going to deliver in that time. And at the end of every sprint, um, we'll run a retrospective immediately afterwards. And it's quite simple uh, and we do it all the time for various campaigns as well. So you we can take some learnings and stuff and improvements. So all it is, is we look at it and we go, so what went well? And everyone puts a bunch of stuff up on the board and then we go, what didn't go so well? And everyone puts stuff up on the board. And then from that, everyone kind of votes on the main issues that they prefer. Um, and then we assign actions to each of them so that we can do incremental change every two weeks to improve our processes. And in the end, if you do these small incremental changes, uh, it adds up to something huge at the end of the year. You can go look at where we were here and how much we've done once we've gotten to this way and how much things have improved. So it's not always about trying to wrangle one huge bureaucratic mess and try and fix this huge thing. 
when we try and work on the small things incrementally every two weeks, it's huge results in the end. And it's very satisfying for the team because we see immediate results. You would, and it must be such a well-ordered feast. I mean, it's for someone like me that loves a good system and procedure, it sounds like the, you know, the, the absolute heaven of where you want to be if you're that sort of person. Oh God, yes, absolutely. This is this is ideal for me. Um, and, you know, and going back to your first question, um, I wanted to be a fashion designer. Things, oh, I love all things design, and I, I'll just be so well dressed and all that thing. But what it, what it really came up to is that I, I found when I was organizing photo shoots and fashion shows and production, that's where my talents lay, and what I really enjoyed is is making sure things are a well oiled machine and things work. Um, and, and getting things out the door and delivering something amazing. And do the teams enjoy that process as well of reviewing what went well, what didn't, and then tweaking it and then trying it again? Does that become addictive? I think so, yeah. And because the teams can see think things are actually getting done, because I think oftentimes uh, different organisations, if it's like if they're large or regardless, if there's bureaucracy involved, and sometimes it's hard to get any traction to get anything fixed. Mm. Um, but in this case, once we start making all these incremental changes and we often find that other teams will be doing similar as well and it all kind of ends up working together. So it, it's always about fine tuning, you know. You can say we're really good now, but we can always be better and there's always, you know, uh, something new to try um, and, and a saying that they like to, to throw around a lot at Willie's X is fail fast and it's you know they it speaks to the environment that allows us to try new things and fail without you know any issues and stuff and we want people and my team particularly I want them to be able to put their hand up and go no I don't think this is right or we should try this or can we do something else instead and well yes let's just try it. It sounds really empowering. Um, it I, is. Wonderful. One of the more common constraints to agile adoption, I hear, is the friction between increased autonomy at the team level and the need for the leaders to re retain some control. What, what is the key to achieving agility without losing that visibility and control, do you think? Well, I think I think leadership teams can have plenty of visibility on the work that is going on. But as as I said before, in agile, the role of leadership is to be a servant leader. And that goes all the way up to the top. Um, and so while, yes, they have plenty of visibility and they can say, this is what we want the campaign to do. Um, but let they, we need to let them know as we feed up the chain what we need to get our job done and it's their job to deliver it to us. And it's my job as well. What does my team need to deliver their work? Uh, is Are you missing this? Are you missing assets? Is the dam not working? Various different things. It could be anything. It could be kind of a technical issue that's a problem or maybe they need new tools or a different tool and so we just we go and get that for them and we then get out of the way and if you just trust people and you know and people know this when you do trust them they they own the work and they are happy to get it done and my team gets things done super fast on time perfection they are absolute geniuses i have to say it sounds wonderful the the lockdowns they really differed across the state how did Woolies adapt to the increase in store demand and online shopping and, and what role did um, your creative services department play in all of that? Well, that was huge, actually. Um, that saw us working round the clock um, to deliver messaging um, and to ramp up um, online delivery. Um, so... For, on like the Woolies X handles sort of the online shopping experience for for Woolies customers and the difference from last year to this year in terms of how many people are now shopping online is enormous. So what Woolies X did was across board we did there was systems improvements but the main thing was a super scaling um, to allow people to have their food delivered. We did 
all kinds of things like um, put in provisions for people who might be self-isolating. Um, we rolled out tons of direct boot stores so people can still pick up but just go park up in their car and the groceries were brought to their boot and they don't even have to go in the store. And that went out across hundreds upon hundreds of stores and just ramping up capacity as well um, to get the products out to people. What changes did you make that you think you'll keep in the post-COVID world? Um, I th we've made huge improvements in the online shopping experience itself. Yeah. Um, I think there, we're still working on improvements for it. Um, but what we really wanted to do was make sure that the older generation who have probably never shopped online before and we're now switching to it, um, found it easy to navigate and use. So uh, we did put out an initiative, especially during the lockdown, which was called Priority Assistance. Um, and that allowed people of a certain age or with a disability to get priority windows for delivery because we did have, we did have um, issues with supply when people went crazy for toilet paper. Um, we since put, we put in limits and stuff for the online shopping um, and in store to prevent that. And then uh, priority assistant addressed priority assistance addressed the issue um, for those who couldn't make it into store um, and who needed it the most. And so we had a lot of messaging on site, um, a lot of new web pages to outline the online shopping experiencing experience. Uh, with FAQs, videos, um, and just awareness across the site to help people get their shop done. Yeah, look, it changed a lot of things and in some ways absolutely for the better. What, what type of projects are you guys working on now? Um, at the moment, we've got a bunch of top secret campaigns that we'll be working on that'll be getting rolled out in the next six months. So I can't really talk about those, but suffice it to say, I think uh, customers would be very happy with it as they were with Discovery Gardens. So there's there's a few big things in the pipeline. And then our usual, we have Mother's Day coming up. Um, so there'll be some new offerings for that that aren't just groceries. Um, we've just launched uh, Everyday Marketplace uh, or we're about to. Um, so we're testing that out so people can purchase more than just uh, people can purchase more than just groceries um, with their shop. So, uh, for instance, you know, you can buy you can buy a toaster now, I guess, at Woolies, but there'll be a far wider range of products that are available, not necessarily delivered with your groceries, but um, within the week, that sort of thing. So we're just expanding the range and giving customers a lot more options. Hey, that sounds very exciting. So my final question, um, Karen, what would you say to a creative who was thinking about making a move from an agency environment into an in-house studio? Well, I have to say, having worked in agency only briefly, um, I find in-house much better. It's. I have to say though, I've always worked in really high velocity environments because I really thrive in that. Um, previously at News Corp, it was the same thing. Very, very fast, fast turn of work, as it is here at Woolies X. But um, I guess in house, the difference is possibly if it's a if it's a big company, you have a lot of support around you and resources. Um, Sometimes it's a bit of bureaucracy, so it's a bit of a trade-off. Um, but I think the work-life balance is much better, mm -hmm. um, and it is encouraged, uh, particularly at Woolies X, that people take time for themselves and not work themselves into the ground. They're very much aware that they want everyone to be working at a sustainable pace. Mm -hmm. um, and quite honestly, it's probably the best place I have ever worked. It's wow. been my favorite job so far. Well, I'm sure um, your employers will be thrilled when they hear you say that <laughs> and your team, <laughs> absolutely. Karen, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. They were, abs they were wonderful insights. Thank you. It's been my pleasure as well. And um, our I hope our paths pass again soon. You take care. Keep well. Yeah, you too. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.